Okay, let's go ahead and get started and uh, people can show up as I'm going through my little introduction. So, welcome to the third in our Arctos webinar series. Uh, we're going to be talking about transactions. So, in Arctos, that includes loans, accessions, permits. And here with us today, we have Carlos Cicero and Michelle Koo from the Museum of Vertebrate Zoology at UC Berkeley. Um, I'm Erica Krimmel. I'm at the Chicago Academy of Sciences, and I'm just here to make sure things run smoothly. Uh, you can blame me for any problems instead of Carla and Michelle. So if it's your first time to Adobe Connect, we have a few little basics. As I was just saying, if you want to go um, list where you're coming from, your institution, you can go to the top of the attendees pod and use the little hamburger icon. You also um, can change the color of your chat text should you so desire. That's in the little hamburger icon at the top of the chat box. Your microphones are turned off right now just to make sure that the sound quality is best for everybody. Um, but we can turn them on the end for questions if, if you'd like to talk. One thing that we always request of webinar participants is that you go ahead and fill out a post-webinar survey. That's the URL that's linked in the slide showing right now. It's also linked in the little box at the top right of your screen. Welcome to Arctos webinar series. Um, the post-webinar survey is, is very short. And what it means is that iDigBio will continue letting us use their technical infrastructure to host these webinars. And you won't have to sign up in advance or anything like that. So it's a, a nice thing that we can do to keep having free resources like this available. Some general Arctos things. We are recording all of these webinars, including this one. So you can find the recordings um, at the URL on the screen here. You can find more about Arctos in our user handbook, or you can search our data at arctos.database.museum. These links are all also in the little info box at the upper right of your screen. And then our next webinar is going to be on projects, publications, and citations. And that'll be uh, the second Tuesday in December the 12th. So there's a link for that as well. So at this point, I'm going to stop sharing my screen. And Carla is going to start sharing her screen. And she's going to launch into the, the meat of the webinar. Um, as we're going through, uh, Michelle is working with Carla to monitor the chat. So if you have any questions while Carla's talking, you're more than welcome to put them in the chat. And Michelle can either answer them in the chat or we can and or we can come back to them at the end of the presentation and discuss them as a group. So take it away. Okay, thanks, Erica. <clears throat> so I just want to make sure that everybody can see the screen okay. So if anybody's having issues with um, seeing the screen, just put it in the chat and I can make it bigger. Um, <clears throat> so as Erica said, this webinar is going to focus on transactions. And um, which are accessions, loans, and permits. And I'm starting out at the Arctos home screen, um, logged out. And so access to um, creating or editing um, transactions requires operator permissions. So um, I'm going to log in. And you'll see right now I just have these four tabs up at the top. So I'm going to go ahead and log in. <clears throat> and you see I have a lot a lot more tabs. Um, so when you, as a, as a curator or collection manager, um, when you're creating permissions for somebody in your collection, you can decide whether they should have permission to manage transactions. It's always something that you can add later on um, if some, as somebody becomes more experienced. So we have a lot of students, for example, that we um, give permissions to, to to help with loans and things like that. Um, OK, so in Arctos, all of the transactions are under this Manage Data tab called Manage Data. And you'll see here transactions. And you can create an accession, find an, search on accessions, create a loan, find a loan. Borrows, I'm not going to talk about too much on um, that. But that's basically loans that are coming into an institution, and then permits. So I'm going to focus on accessions, loans, and permits. Um, so to create an accession, so we're going to break this up basically into try to do at, um, 10 or 15 minutes for accessions, permits, and loans. And then I'm going to turn it over to Michelle, who's going to talk about a specific type of loan 
called a data loan and also a brief introduction to projects as a which will um, then be carried forward in the next webinar more in more detail. Um, <clears throat> so if you want to create an accession, you basically go to create accession. Um, so one um, important thing to keep in mind is that accessions are basically owned by collections. So um, as an operator, you only would have access to create accessions for your collection. Um, and so you can see here a list of all of the different collections in Arctos. Um, on the right here um, is our suggestions about accession numbers. So this is, has a lot of flexibility um, because different collections do things in different ways in terms of, of how they number their accessions. And so you can basically set this up at the time that you, you create a new collection in Arctos. So for MVZ, for example, this is our next available accession number. So if I want to create a bird accession, I will just click on, on this link and it'll take me to, it'll automatically fill it in. Um, whereas some of these other ones, it gives you the last created accession. So again, there's a lot of flexibility. Um, you don't need to enforce any patterns. You can also just type a number in if you want, um, things like that. Um, so you can basically decide uh, what works best for you. Um, so I, I want to talk about the basic fields. Um, so um, the accession, so the collection and the accession number, the status, which is basically is this class accession in process or complete, um, the date that it was received. That's a date field, so you can search on specific you know accessions received between specific dates. The nature of material, that's just a, a text field. Um, different collections enter things differently, so we would. An MVZ just uh, typically enter things like the number of specimens or estimated number of specimens in the accession, what it is, where it's from, things like that. Um, just a basic description of the material, um, whether they're tissues or skins or skeletons. Um, received from ties to our agent table. So if it's an accession that I bring in, I can type in my name. You hit the tab, that gets you to a pop-up, and then I'll pick my name from the list. So there are certain fields that are controlled like that, um, where we don't allow people to just type in um, names and potentially mistype it. Um, and then there's other fields that are just basic text fields. Um, how obtained, this is a controlled vocabulary list. Um, based on the type the accessions that we have in the collection, it doesn't in the in Arctis. Um, there could be other things added to the list. Um, this is sort of developed over time. Um, but basically, you know, is it a field collection? Is it a gift? Is it salvage? Was it transferred? Um, was it something you found in some case in the back room? Um, things like that. So, um, and then um, a field for estimated count. So a lot of times, at least for us, when we get things into the museum, we have an estimated count, but we may not. That may not be the final count for the accession because specimens get discarded for some reason or, or things like that. And then basic remarks fields, um, which could be whatever you want to type. Um, and then also, and then down here, um, whether the accession has correspondence or no. That's just a yes/no field. If you wanted to put more information about the correspondence, you probably put that in the remarks. And then. Um, whether the accession is public or private. And the default is private, which means that the general public can't see the details of an accession. Um, and, um, but there are cases where you, wanna might, you, you may want to make your accession public. So for example, paleontology museums, sometimes they'll, they'll collect a bunch of specimens. They have locality information. The specimens aren't yet digitized, but they want to make that information available so they can make their collection public. And, and here's an example. I'm going to show you what that looks like. Logged in, this is a, or a not logged in. So this is a, I'm not logged in here. So you can see just the four tabs. Here's a bison from the um, University of Alaska or Sciences um, collection. And here's the accession number. There's some media associated with it. And if you actually click on that accession field, you'll get all of the details about that accession. 
For private accessions, it'll basically tell you to go away that you don't have access to that information. So that can be valuable for uh, cases where you don't have the specimens yet digitized, but you want to make the information available. Um, and if anybody has any questions at any time, um, feel free to, um, uh, to ask them. So, um, OK, so, um, so here's an accession that was filled in um, by UAM Entomology, 60 ticks um, received from this agent. Um, it does have correspondence. This one is public. Um, and you can see that there's media attached to it. So you can attach media to accessions. Um, in this particular case, the media is a PDF file that has the data associated with it. So here's an example of a spreadsheet um, saved as a PDF file with the information associated with that accession. Um, I'm going to close out of that. Um, and um, Here's another example. This one's kind of cool. This is from also from the University of Alaska. This is their cultural collection, their ethnology collection, um, received as a gift. Um, it's a basket collection. They've also associated media, but it's and that's an actual report um, about that collection. So there's lots of different ways that you can associate media to uh, different kinds of media to to accession. So that's that's helpful. Um, you can search, so that's basically on um, collections. You can, to search on collect on uh, accessions, go to transactions, find accession. And you can search on a number of different um, uh, fields, including the accession number, the nature of material, um, agent, so received um, from um, the collection, um, the, whether it has media or not, the dates it was received, things like that. So lots of different app, um, ways of, so I can, for example, I can search on uh, uh, something that I accessioned um, from uh, Utah um, and see what comes up. So here's a bunch of different accessions. Um, so here's the last one that I did um, in 2015. Um, and if you click on that, you can get all of the details, including, and I'll talk about permits later, but including the permits that were associated with that accession that basically allowed me to, to collect that. So there's the state permit um, and then the federal permit. Um, so uh, I guess before I go on to permits, does anybody have any questions about accessions really fast? Beth is, uh, and Muriel are both typing in the chat right now, so we'll give them a minute to see if they have any questions. Um, I, I just want to say that at Chicago Academy, we manage our sessions interdisciplinarily, so we don't have mammals versus herps, um, and Arctos makes that really easy to do. So we that's one feature we really like. Uh, Muriel, Muriel in the chat says project projects yeah, and yeah. sessions and Mariel I think we're gonna get into that a little bit more at the end with Michelle um, so we'll come back to that and then Beth is wondering would right. pictures be something you would add to an accession or would it be better to attach them to a specimen um, so we're gonna have a whole um, webinar on media but um, normally, we would probably uh, attach, it depends on what the pictures are, obviously. So um, if there are pictures of collecting events, so say the habitat where specimens are associated, then we would attach that to the collecting event, which is then linked to the specimen. If it's a picture of the specimen itself, um, we would attach it, we would um, uh, link that picture to the specimen, to the cataloged item. Um, so we probably wouldn't do it to the accession, uh, um, at least in MBZ. I'm not sure, Erica, what you do, but you know things that. So basically, media that are attached to the accession are things that document the accession. So things like spreadsheets, um, or um, correspondence potentially, right? Exactly. Correspondence is another thing where we actually have um, attached correspondence as media to accession. So something that that talks about the donation to the Yeah, that, that's what I would say um, as well. 
I think we're ready to. Uh, oh, Michelle, go ahead. Um, so, so like, no, that's all right. I was just uh, there was another question about can the session never field be automated? Um, I did respond that it can be automated, but maybe you'd like to. Right. That. So. Um, it can be, yeah, so it can be automated. So basically, as I mentioned, when you go to create an accession, um, so if you're first coming into Arctos as a new collection, you would tell, you know, tell Arctos or the programmers how, how your accessions are structured, how your accession numbers are structured and formatted. And if it makes sense to automate it, then that's easy to do. So that's what we've done. So when we came into Arctos, we said, OK, we brought in all of these legacy accessions, and then um, you know, we use that to say, okay, starting at this number, the next available number is this, and then for the last you know 15 years or however long we've been in Arctos, it just keeps auto incrementing. Um, did that answer? I the think question? so. Yeah. And um, just to clarify, Carla, Arctos wouldn't let you create a duplicate accession number even if you're doing it by hand, correct? Yeah, so, so even if you're doing uh, it by correct. hand, there are some. Um, so. No, you can't. You can create. We have that issues of duplicate low numbers. Um, right, that's because they're I mean, they're, uh, they're alphanumeric. They're right, it's a, yeah, so that, but, but it's not very common. But we have had some issues with that. But yeah, with accessions, you can't, within your collection, create a duplicate accession number. At least not that, yeah. Um, okay, so I'm going to move on to permits because I think permits, everybody's interested in permits, that's important. So basically you have the same thing, you have create or find a permit. So one thing that um, I want to just say right at the outset is that permits, um, like accessions and loans, are attached currently to transactions. And so we don't actually have permit information available at the specimen level. However, we ha we're working to make some changes to how we deal with permits to trickle some of that information down to the specimen level. And it's not going to have the details about the permit, but it'll have basically whether there is a permit, whether this specimen was covered by a permit or not, um, and maybe some very basic information about the kind of permit. And, and the reason that we're, we're making these changes is because of funding that we have to um, provide data to the Global Genome Biodiversity Network, and they require it as part of the Nagoya Protocol. So we're currently having some discussions about the best way to do that and also about how to other kinds of changes we might want to do, uh, implement for permits. So one of those might be fleshing out a little bit better the permit type. So um, basically the basic information that you have for permit is for a new permit is who issued it. So again, that um, ties to the um, agent table, which could be an organization. So if you do fish and wildlife, you have, you know, is California, Fairbanks, or is it US? Um, so you have all these different organizations. So who issued the permit? Who it, it's issued to? Um, again, from the agent table. Um, those are required. The contact person is not required. But if you enter something, this actually just came up um, recently in our Arctos working group meeting. If you if you uh, enter somebody in as the contact person, then that person, as long as they have a valid email address in Arctos, will get notifications when the permit is going to expire. So when I enter permits in for the museum, I'm the contact person for our you know, Fish and Wildlife Service or USDA permit. So I put my name as the contact person. And it's helpful that the permit's going to, I know it tells me when the permit's going to expire. And it, it sends me multiple emails. I think, I can't remember what, exactly what it is. It might be like six months or three months, and then one month, and then uh, more frequently. Um, but I don't enter the contact person in for every permit that we get because not everybody wants to get that notification. So and that's really kind of a call that you need to make. Um, and then basic date information, the issue date, um, expiration date, renew date, and then the permit number. Those are all just text fields. And then the permit type. So these are this is what we have right now. This is a controlled vocabulary, but we actually have a GitHub issue. Um, going on right now about sort of fleshing this out and making it. Um, right now, you can only have one permit type per permit, but a lot of times a permit may cover multiple activities. 
Um, so we're going to try to to sort of break this up and make it clear. So you have an, a collecting permit, an export permit, an import permit, transport permit, you know, whatever other kinds of permits there are for the different kinds of, of research that we do. Um, so uh, let's see. Um, so the other thing right now is that unlike accessions, which um, are controlled, they're basically owned by the collections. Permits basically are shared. Or permit information is shared across Arctos collections. So the information is not public, um, but it is shared across inst across collections. So if um, this, if one permit, one expedition has specimens that are being split, you can enter that permit once, and then the same. Different collections can add their accessions to that one permit. Um, and um, but we are having, and so you can attach media to permits, um, but then um, those, you know, if you want, like want to scan your your permit and make it available, you could do that. But then it's available to the public as well. So we're we're in discussions right now about how to do this so that we can upload our permits. Um, in a way that's password protected and not available to the public. So there will be some changes um, coming down the road on that as well. Um, so uh, basically searching permits, so find a permit. Um, so if I want to search on permits um, issued to me by Fish, Fish and Wildlife, um, do that. And here's all my many, many permits. And you can edit the permit. You can also get a list of the accessions associated with um, any one of these permits. And it tells you um, the expiration dates. So some of these expired. Um, this obviously should have been given, and it wasn't. Um, this is expiring in 501 days. So at some point, I will get an email saying uh, it's time to renew my permit. Um, let's see. Um, Okay. Uh, are there any questions? Yeah. Okay. I can do an session. So let me go to one that I heard recently. Um, let's do this one. Okay. So here's four accessions associated with that particular permit. Um, most of these are salvaged um, birds um, that came in. Actually, all of them are salvaged birds that came in, as opposed to ones that I collected, because my permit actually allows us to receive salvage specimens from anybody who wants to give them to us. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, find one that's, um, yeah, so um, but anyway, um, any other, any questions about, you can also enter a fishing license. It's another kind of permit. Let's see what I collected under there. Um, OK, so this is an example where um, I, in California, you at least used to be able to collect herps with a fishing license. <laughs> so um, this is a, an expedition that we did um, as part of the Granobi Survey Project, and we picked up a couple of herps. And um, so I added my fishing license to that. Um, any questions on permits? One thing that, this is Erica, one thing that seems handy to me is, is you could um, you know, go and search the Arctos database on a permit number to be able to download all the data of specimens you collected to send back for reporting, correct? Correct. Yes, you could do that. So if you go to, uh, I think that's under, um, you go to specimens. And yeah, that's a good point. Um, yeah, specimens, and then under curatorial, if you wanted to download everything, if you've accessioned and cataloged everything under a permit, and you want to send your end of year report to the agency, you can search on that permit um, and download all of the data and send it to them as a spreadsheet. If, if and Mariel also yeah, points out that if you were that. just interested in things um, from one accession for reporting, you could get the specimen data that way too. So all of this is just this, yeah. Right, so you, right, so you would search on the permit and, uh, and enter in your accession number, your 
collection. So basically all of the things that you would do. To, yeah. You know, and all of this is just to say that hopefully Arctos transition or transactions are, are here to make your, your life as a collections manager or curator uh, more efficient and easier. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Um, all right. Well, we'll have uh, we're gonna hopefully have about fifteen minutes at the end for more questions. But I'm just gonna switch to loans now. So um, going back to loans. Um, so basically, you can create a loan or find a loan, same as the others. Um, so if you go to create loan. Um, Again, this is sort of formatted. You can type in a loan number, um, but typically most collections have some kind of format to their or structure to their loans. And so, um, but it varies depending on the institution um, how they how those loans are are structured. So um, here's so, but it, this tells you the next available loan number, so you don't have to go look it up somewhere. Um, so. Um, and again, like <clears throat> like trend, like accessions, um, loans are owned by collections. So uh, um, you can only see you can only edit loans or create loans that you have access to for uh, to collections that you have access to. Um, so there's um, information on who authorized the loan. So that may be the curator or the collection manager. Again, tied to the agent table. Um, who issued the loan? Who the loan is issued to, and then in-house and outside contacts. So, for example, in MVZ, um, Rory Bowie and I are the ones that review loans together. So we'll jointly authorize it. So we've created an agent that's basically a group name, um, but then I'm the in-house contact. So I'm the person who. Um, what wants to receive the signed invoice back saying that the person received the loan, things like that. Um, and then to typically, you know, at least for us, we would loan to um, a curator or a professor, but not to a student or a postdoc or somebody in a temporary position. Um, or and then um, or an artist that wants to use a collect use specimens and they need to go visit a collection. So we would loan it to the curator and then the contact would be whoever the, the specimens are actually being used by. Um, we have different types of loans, um, so consumable loans, which are um, pretty self-explanatory, but you would use that for things like tissue loans or destructive sampling loans, but you don't expect to get anything back. So um, feather samples um, for isotope analysis or towpad samples for genetic analysis, things like that. Um, data loan, Michelle's going to talk about data loan which is kind of a, a unique type of loan, in-house, um, created that to kind of keep track of things that, of uh, loans that are being used by specimen, by uh, people in our own institution. Um, legacy loans, we do have legacy loans, and then there's kind of a mix here. Um, return of loans, so that's if we're sending specimens that was borrowed from somebody in our institution. Um, we're returning those, we want to track that, so it's a return of a loan. If it's specimens you expect to get back, it's a returnable loan. Sometimes you have skins and tissues, so that's kind of a mix, so that's a mixed loan. And then transfer of custody would be if we're permanently um, giving specimens to another institution. For example, if specimens are coming here and then getting split based on the permit requirements or we're just gifting them for whatever reason to another institution, we're transferring the custody of those specimens. Um, and nature of material, again, is just a text field. Um, so you can type in whatever you want. You can put in loan instructions, um, a description, and, and remarks. Um, did I, somebody, Marielle or somebody, popped up a question, I think. Yes, it, it's not related to it. Oh, OK. Um, OK, so um, transactions. Um, so if we want to search on a loan, so I'm going to search on, um, it's, Helpful to search on uh, agent roles, especially if you're searching on somebody who's a part of an Arctos institution. Um, so I'm going to search on loans to John McCormick. Um, he's also the curator at, at the Moore Lab, which is in Arctos. If I didn't put received by, then I might get everything that he's authorized and uh, things like that. But I just want to know things 
the loans that he's received. Um, so let's just do that. Okay, so you can see um, here um, all of the loans that he's gotten, um, including ones that are not just from MBZ. I could have restricted it to MBZ, but here's one from DGR, so that's the um, Division of Genomic Resources at MSB. Um, here's a bunch of other MBZ loans. And um, you can see different kinds of loans. So here's consumable. These are all consumable loans, so they're tissue loans. Lots of tissue loans. Um, here's a return of a loan um, that was used for a study by this person. Um, and um, here's a return of a loan. So these are study skins that we expect to get back. We did get back, so um, we noted that here and then closed the loan. You can also see, um, you can also attach um, pr uh, uh, permits to loans. So you have to create the loan first. Um, but once you have the loan, then you can attach shipments. So um, once you have a loan, you can attach shipments, which is, you know, uh, and you can have multiple shipments um, for any given loan. You attach the specimens to the loan. So you have to do that. And you can do that either through barcodes or by selecting, by typing in the, the numbers. So this is the whole list of specimens. Um, and um, Let's see. Um, and then you can attach uh, permits to the loans. I think that's down here. So if it's an international loan, you might want to attach a permit to it. And you can also attach media to the loan. So sometimes people do have media. Um, and, um, and projects. So um, again, you have to have the loan already in Arctis in order to attach a project. And Michelle's going to talk about projects. but. Um, you can see that for these loans to John McCormick, it's a bunch of different projects. So here's one on, on scrub jays. Here's one on quail. Um, here's um, the same one on quail. Um, two different loans. So the same. So this is one neat thing. So this is one advantage of Arctis and being able to share data is that it's one project where he's requested samples from both the Museum of Southwestern Biology and MVZ. And so we can attach two different loans from two different institutions to the same project and track what somebody's doing. Um, and um, anyway, all of these have projects. Here's a second uh, we, second loan. We have some questions. Oh, we have questions. OK. Yeah, so one of the first questions from Lisa, uh, she asked, um, the next loan number should be uh, numbered loans. You have to number loan. Um, um, yeah, that's, I'm not exactly sure how that works. Um, you know, I think that's something that, uh, have, have you, uh, Teresa, have you tried to work with Dusty on, on getting that to work? Um, I mean, my understanding, nope. Huh. Okay, um, that's something that we can follow up on. I'm okay, not exactly so sure how he right. how he deals with that. And then so uh, Michelle, we can't hear you when you're asking up. questions off off the mic. So um, I'll go ahead and bring up Beth's question, which was next. Which if uh, Carla, if you do a loan to an artist and they produce a painting from it, would you attach a scan of the painting to the loan or to the project? That's from Beth. I would do that to the project. Um, yeah, I would probably do it to the project. So Michelle said she would probably do it to the project, and I think I would agree with that because it's sort of an outcome of the loan. I guess we could also um, we could think of the loan as being kind of temporal on the project. Yeah, that would be, a, that would be relevant longer. So you'd want the the painting to stay with the the thing that stays relevant longer. And it's also because loans are not, the public can't see loans, whereas the public can see projects. Um, that's a, that would be another reason to attach it to the project. So it's, it's media that are visible to the general public, you know, that's interested in, in whatever that project is. That would be my, my 
I wanted to add that um, for all of us you know, that need to manage paper copies of all these sort of documentations as well, Arctos has the ability to create reports from any of the transactions that we're doing. So, you know, we can have, we can enter in a session into Arctos and then have it formatted as a report that then we can print out and keep in our paper archives. Same with loans. Right. Oh, and Mary, no, the same point. But yeah, Carla, right. can you talk so, about that a little thanks bit? Thanks for bringing that up. So, Yeah, so, um, right, so we can generate, so customize, customizable loan invoices from loans. Um, so if you go to edit loan, you'll see here, um, you print any report. And so um, this is, and we'll have a thing, uh, a webinar just on reporting, but these are all of the different Arctis reports. So I'm going to go to MVZ because we've, Customize the loan for our, um, you know, for the way that we want it to look, but you can customize it for yourself. So there's basically, uh, there's a loan header and a loan invoice. Um, and then we've also created an, a loan item slip, which is, allows us to actually, rather than writing down the numbers and putting it on a piece of paper where the skin is removed from the tray, we can actually print that out. Um, but the loan header, basically, so you can print that report, um, and that, um, so again, this you can customize this to look the way you want. But basically, <clears throat> um, it uses the who the who the loan is to, so the received by person. They have to have an address in the agent table. So, um, and um, so this is entered also into their into the shipment, and so um, that's where this information is from. So the the agent and its address. Who's approved the loan? Um, so it could be me, it could be me and Rory. Somebody signs off on it. You know, kind of loan it is. And then, um, and then this is also as part of the shipment. So I'm the one shipping it, um, and I have a, <clears throat> I have an address in the agent table. I have a title. So this is filled in from that information um, as the person who, and I'm I'm the in-house contact. So. Um, so that's where this information is coming from as a person who, who is going to get the invoice to that's that the, the recipient signs um, and the person's signature and then a policy on usage. So that's the loan um, uh, loan invoice header and then the loan invoice um, is the actual list of specimens. Um, so um, as a PDF file. So we typically print this out and we keep a hard copy here and then we um, send you know two copies to the to the recipient, one for them to sign and return um, and one for uh, them to keep so that they have a record of it. You can send it electronically if you want. <coughs> um, but this detail, so page one of ten, um, all of the specimens that were used, including the information about where they're from, um, the coordinates, um, sex, and species. And all of the information, like Carla said, in these reports is customizable, and so is the format. So that makes them pretty handy to use. Carla, I think we should switch uh, over to Michelle so we can talk about data loans and then maybe come back to we have at least one outstanding question for the end. Okay, so it's the last two. Okay, great. Hello. So we're going to talk about a specific kind of loan. So w what this data loan allows us to do, I'll just kind of step back <clears throat> a little bit and uh, um, discuss the, the issue that we're trying to address with this kind of data loan, uh, with this kind of loan. So a lot of the uses of uh, museum collections nowadays are actually um, not uh, tied to specific specimens, but maybe tied to its metadata or other kinds of uses like um, taking a photograph of it or, or publishing a photograph of it in a, in a publication. So all those other kinds of uses. So basically, there's this sort of, you know, everything else kind of uh, loan. And that's what the data loan tries to, uh, uh, gives us the flexibility to capture those transactions. So we can continue to just track, you know, the myriad of uses uh, that people have for um, uh, collection uh, specimens. So um, 
data loans um, allows us uh, to track specimens, and the creation of it is identical to a regular loan, but of course you choose loan uh, of the loan type of data instead of um, um, any of the other ones. And um, you can see from this one here um, that uh, it can encompass a, a, a a large amount of kinds of data. So actually, before we dive into this specific one, let's um, just take a look at um, a couple of other data loans. Uh, this time, I'm just going to pick data here. Oops. You want to search them? Yeah, I'm just going to search on. Oops. One. Oops, sorry. I got create. Sorry. I'm not going to create one right now, especially since it's on Find a loan. Sorry about that. Um, I think I'm logged in as Carla. We should be seeing MBZ. So you can have it for as many uh, specimens, you know, as uh, needed. So it could be, you know, a single one, a couple of them, or it could be. I, I just found out our largest data loan is for 13,000 um, specimens. Is taking a little bit of time, so we'll just uh, skip ahead here. Um, and once those are created. Once those are created, then um, uh, you can associate it with a project. So this is where I, I'm going to seg into introducing projects a little bit. So a project is actually one of my favorite parts of um, Arctos because it allows us to, it's a sort of a special feature of, um, of Arctos. Um, there, I don't know of many other kinds of uh, collection management systems that allows us to do this for natural history museums where we can aggregate all the different assets within our collection management system um, in a, uh, for a specific um, purpose. So the purpose may be um, a biodiversity survey like I have here for uh, the historic Grinnell survey um, in Joshua Tree National Park. Or it could be something like um, the publication uh, and the use of uh, a specimen for um, a uh, news outlet, you know, which wanted to highlight, you know, the last grizzly bear that was shot in California, for instance. So, it, it, you know, it could be used for um, a graduate student's research project. It could be used for um, a loan um, of uh, their specimens for that, for their project. So the project then will give us a way of tracking the agents. Um, the, the title itself is um, something that a curator creates. Um, as well as the description. If it's an outside research project, we may ask the um, graduate student to give us a, a short abstract, or maybe that already came with the loan request, so that's you know easy to copy and paste it in there. Um, the description is um, flexible enough that you can include um, hyperlinks to other external websites. Um, so we have one for a related project, the resurvey of this particular uh, national park. Um, we also have uh, a general website here that goes to the, an MVZ website about the Grinnell resurvey um, uh, efforts um, in California. And we also have a link here to the field notes that um, are based on this particular uh, historic uh, survey. Um, the data loan is attached via these um, specimens used. And so that gives, and so that that's uh, the 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 way that we can customize the specific specimens um, associated with the uh, project. You click on edit project, and yeah. So let's do that now. I think we both had a question to do. But, okay. Um, so here, let's take a look at the edit page um, now that we've seen what the public sees on the project page. Um, this is what a curator would see. So you can see the the title, the Title allows you um, to actually, this title will be used in a stable-ish, not entirely 100% stable URL. So this will be converted into part of the URL that can be shared. Um, here's what the description box looks like um, when it's been fully marked up in HTML. 
but you can actually uh, write the project description in Markdown, which is a much uh, easier way of doing that. Um, we'll go into more detail with this in the next webinar series. Um, you can see the project agents, and then here are the transactions that they that this is associated with. In particular, we have project accessions, which are um, show up as uh, contributed specimens. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Yes, I think so. Yeah. And then project loans, which shows up as um, the actual specimens uh, associated with this. So you can see that there are uh, several data loans um, uh, associated with this project. Now the reason why I had to make a data loan for these and I did not associate an accession was because for each one of these um, groups of uh, specimens, the accessions that they were associated with was not dedicated to the original survey effort. And in fact, they were, um, in those days, uh, accessions were merely sort of the convenience, I think, for the curatorial assistant who was cataloging a large backlog. Backlog, So it, would, it included specimens that were part of the survey in Joshua Tree, um, which was not a national park at the time. Um, but it also included salvage material from the road as they were traveling to and from the park. It included um, incidentals that had actually absolutely nothing to do with the um, uh, survey work, but were probably um, just accessioned uh, at the same time that the curatorial assistant was cataloging the specimen. So this allowed me to do specific spatial searches for specimens and um, remove the unrelated um, uh, specimens to um, this project. And then once those data loans were created, then I could um, associate with the project loan. Um, if there were publications that were tied to this uh, particular project, I could also add those as well. Beth had a question yeah. about data loans. Um, okay. You, <clears throat> you create data loans for all researchers visiting your collection to, um, if they're examining specimens. Yeah, that's a good question. We have this these discussions all the time, actually. I, I would say it's, it's up to the discretion of the particular uh, staff curator, at least here, um, because in some cases, they, it may be associated with another larger uh, loan, and they just wanted to do measurements here. Um, but for the ones that are people are taking photographs, w uh, more commonly we are creating data loans for those photographs so we can track that usage because um, it is it will it will it, it becomes the only record that we have that that specimen was actually handled and used. So, um, so yes, in those cases, we are doing that. So, even, uh, so <clears throat> I would say almost especially for people who are coming in and doing a series of photographs or some, some kind of, you know, more hands-on measurements. So, Teresa said that um, for people coming and using her collection that she'll create an in-house loan. Yeah, so, a, d a similar. Which is similar. Um, yeah. I would think that a data loan would be if there's data like a, a photograph or yeah. something that that could potentially be published, um, and, uh, and also that you might want to get back um, an image. Right. So a lot of times when people come in and photograph our collection, we'll ask for copies of photographs, and so we and associated and there. associated. Yeah. yeah. So so are you doing in-house loans or data loans for the like? Uh, we've done both. Um, you know, to be honest, we don't do loans for because of time constraints. Um, but uh, in an ideal world, <coughs> well, we would create a loan for all in house and a data loan if they're actually taking photographs or something like that. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's a good question, though. Um, another uh, example, actually, of a data loan usage would be for um, a species distribution modeling um, analyses, uh, especially if. We happen to be doing them here, um, then uh, this would be a use of metadata for the specimen. So actually, in those cases, you know, typically the researcher probably hasn't even looked at the specimen. Well, um, so I was just, yeah, the but largest. But it will be tied to a publication. So the largest data loan that Michelle was referencing was one that I created for the science article that came out of um, using our digital egg images. 
And basically, they never came to the collection. They never came to the museum. But they used all of our online images of our egg collection. And so, and then there was a publication associated with that. So really, the only way to link that publication to the specimens was through um, a project and a data loan. And so that's what I did. I created a data loan and um, attached to go all the way down at the bottom. Yeah. Um, you'll see, so every one of the, our egg specimens now is attached to that publication and that project. This is Eric. I have one logistical loan. thing to say, just that I, I turned on the participant's microphone. So in case anybody wants to ask questions using voice, you might need to click the little green microphone icon in your top bar. Um, I also, Michelle and Carla, I wanted to under, make sure I understand this right. We don't use data loans very often, so I'm not as familiar with these. So if you want to attach a specimen to a project, you have to do that through a transaction, correct? You, like either an accession or a loan? OK. So that would be another reason That's like right. data loans exactly. would be a, a way to help you attach specimens to a project. That right. makes so exactly. that's 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 what I that's why I did it for these egg images. Yeah, this is, that's the main function of I think data loans, at least here at MVZ, is to create projects from them and, and be able to track usage of individual specimens. Right. So, you know, there's kind of I mean, there's 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 I envision data loans as sort of two different functions. One is data about the specimens, which might be um, you know, you could create if somebody's doing a modeling study, right, where they're actually using the data for, for that kind of thing. Um, and then other examples where you have, like, digital yeah. images, but they're actually not using the specimens themselves. They're not actually measuring the specimens themselves. Um, so, yeah. And if somebody's coming here to the museum and looking at our specimens and taking digital images, um, we could, you know, ideally we would probably create an, an in-house loan and a data loan. I, I, I'm not really sure, actually. I'd have to think about that. <laughs> Again, there's a timing it's, issue. It, and it's a, yeah, it is about timing, right? It's about... Um, so yeah, in the chat, um, Teresa and Emily are both that. also Arctos um, users for anybody who's in the audience that doesn't know them. Um, but Teresa is saying that, you know, if someone asks for data, they get a data loan if they touch a specimen, then it's an other, another kind of loan, like an in-house. Um, and Emily is saying that she, you know, she might deal with that, that like chicken before the egg scenario by creating an in-house loan for visiting researchers where she can print out the header ahead of time, but then um, enter the catalog numbers as they go through and select the specimens they actually want to take out on loan. So lots of different ways to, to make Arctos fit however your institution is already managing these sort of things. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, a good, that's a good policy. I mean, the most important thing is to be able to uh, you know, document right. those, uh, those uh, usages of your collection. Exactly. So I think that's the point to take away is that, you know, Arctos um, really puts a, a, an emphasis on, on tracking and usage of collections, but there's a lot of flexibility built in so that people, you know, every collection do things totally. kind of their own way. So Marielle has a question, or she wants, she would like you to show how to link projects to loans and accessions in the forms. I think we actually might want to save that for our next webinar that's focused on questions only because I, I want to go back to a question that Lindsay from Morton Arboretum asked earlier. So Lindsay wanted to know, she wanted to know if Arctos could be used to link between herbarium specimens and living collections. Um, and in the chat, both Teresa and I said that, yeah, you can do that. I'm wondering if you guys have any more insight and um, maybe any examples. I don't know of any. Um, yeah, I, 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 yes, that is possible. So, um, no. have you guys talked about containers and, and tracking actual items 
no, we're going to have Okay, a, so that's we'll, there'll be there'll be we'll some discussion do. on yeah. that. Yeah, so there but there is that functionality to be able to do that, especially if your arboretum already is tracking living plants, living collections and beds and, you know, certain greenhouses and and the like. Um, I don't believe we have a current botanical garden associated with Arctos, but um, yeah, we uh, we don't. But um, but we do have um, collections, so specimens rather something. that are um, uh, that that do have a lot of other kinds of um, sort of uh, associated um, right. So material. I'm just going to put in a not random number here. So um, yeah, there's different ways of doing that. One would be through projects. One would be through containers potentially, and one would be through relationships. So you can relate any um, specimen to any other specimen through a URL. Um, and you can have different types of relationships. So, and this again is a controlled list, but it could be expanded to include living collections. Um, so, you know, same individual as, for example, or um, collected with. So we could potentially expand that vocabulary. So there's, there are different ways that we we could accommodate that. We actually don't have, we have herbaria, but we don't have any living collections right yeah, now. But currently. So we would need to, you know, have some discussions about what we would need to change or add in order to make that work. But I don't see that as being a problem at all. I think most of Arctos could easily accommodate it. You know, we might need to add some fields or some vocabulary or something to, to better make it. So we just have, thank you for that, guys. Um, we just have a couple more minutes. If you have any questions and you'd like to either uh, speak or put them in the chat, please do. Lindsay from Morton Arboretum says thanks. And Lindsay, please feel free to get in touch with the Arctos Working Group or any of the presenters listed here for more, more information, because um, it's kind of a specific question, but we'd be happy to talk more. Yeah, and we'd be uh, I, we'd be interested in, in uh, definitely in adding living collections yeah, um, great. to Arctos. Yeah, that would be a great. Uh, you know, we've added. Um, yeah, we not that long ago added cultural collections, so it was kind of similar sort of thing where we had to make some adjustments um, to accommodate those. I also want to data. remind people Sorry. that I'm putting the link for the post webinar <laughs> survey in the chat right now. If you could do that, it'll only take you you know less than a minute less than two minutes, I'll be conservative. Um, and it really helps us uh, be able to provide these webinars for free and without registration. Our next webinar, oh, go ahead, Carla. And I was just going to say, yeah, if you look at our list of webinars and you have suggestions on topics that you would like to Right, so you can that find that list of webinars on our website, which I just put the link for in the chat. You can also find the recording. So this webinar is being recorded and will be available um, in the next couple of days on our website. And then you got a taste at the end of this webinar about projects, and we're doing an entire webinar in December on the 12th focused on projects. So you can come to that and learn more. Michelle will be presenting along with Marielle, who's in the audience today, and John from uh, Museum of Southwestern Biology. So. More about that webinar is at the link I also just put in the chat. <laughs> this is actually great. Carla, you should always be presenting because the birds are a really good way for us <laughs> to signal that we're at the end of our hour. Yes. <laughs> You're right on time. Thank you. But yeah, if anybody has any well, other thank questions, thank you guys so much, Carla and Michelle. That was I learned something that was great.